Welcome back to the shop, friends. So it's about 35 degrees outside today, so it's a perfect day to get those cutting boards finished that we started a few weeks ago. So all we have left to do is to put the rubber feet on the cutting boards, and I went ahead and finished up the walnut cutting board, put the feet on there, and I'm gonna show you how I did that with the cherry cutting board. If you're new here, my name is Jim and I'm the creator of the Lasting Build channel. I'm a hobby woodworker and carpenter. I make videos intended to help you improve your skills and inspire you for your next project. If you're new to this series and haven't seen the ingrain cutting board series, I'll put a link to the playlist up above here. You can start from the beginning and go through all the videos. I think there's about five of them. So I found these rubber feet on Amazon and they're made by rubberfeet.us. It says number six by a half inch stainless steel, quantity of 20. I measured the diameter of them and they actually come out to be three quarters of an inch. But um, I like them because they're, they're not exactly clear, even though they say clear, but they're not, they don't really show up that much either. And they come with the screws that are made uh, to be used with them in the packet as well. I'll be sure to put a link in the description if you want to find those feet that I'm using. So here's the walnut board that I finished. And what I did was I just took a Forstner bit and I bored down a little bit, maybe about a uh, quarter inch just to sink those just to sink those feet down a little bit. I didn't want them I didn't want the board to be sitting off of the um, off of the countertop too high. And this turned out pretty nice. They, they're not real obvious looking when you're looking at them from the side. And um, they have kind of a rubbery uh, feel to them. So I think it'll prevent the board from sliding uh, on the countertop, which is the main reason you put feet on it anyhow. So here's the cherry ingrain cutting board that I finished. And it's got the cheese inlay in it. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rubber feet to the bottom of this one. So three quarters of an inch seems about right from the edges of the board. So I've got my marking gauge set at three quarters of an inch. I'm just gonna make make a little bit of a line there so I know where to drill my holes. I'm just gonna go around the board and do that on all four corners. So now I've got a mark where I need to drill my holes, right there. So I've got this little awl that I use for my leather work. I'm just gonna use that to poke a hole right where those crosshairs are make it a little bit easier to start drilling the hole and stay in the spot that I want to be in. I don't do a lot of leather work even though I have some leather working tools but I did make this sheath about six months ago or so. This is for my corner timber framing chisel. I'll link that for you guys above. So we've got all four corners marked on the cutting board where we're going to put our feet and I don't want the feet to stick out quite that far it, that would be about a half inch um, from the bottom surface of the board. And, it, and if you like it that way, that's fine. In fact, um, making the feet, um, screwing the feet directly to the bottom of the board is probably the safest thing to do if your board is already nice and flat and it doesn't have any rocking when you sit it down on a flat surface. But I wanna sink mine down just a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my Forstner bit up. So what I've done is I've taken my Sharpie and, and made a mark on the edge of the Forstner bit with the depth that I want to go down into the board. The idea is that you want the depth into each corner to be identical, otherwise you're going to create some rock in the boards. You could also take a piece of tape and run around the Forstner bit, but you know there, there certainly is some, some error that's going to happen here. You're going to have to kind of fill it out a little bit, but I'm going to try to stop right when I get to that uh, Sharpie mark. And, it did work on the on the walnut board, so it is possible to get it nice and flat where the board doesn't rock by doing it this way. There may be a better way. I, I just don't I just don't know what it is. So I'm putting my board in the vise for this because I don't want it to start spinning on me as I uh, begin drilling. If you're new to woodworking and you haven't built yourself a workbench yet, you need to do that. I love having a workbench that I can use and. Uh, Having a vise right here at my main working station is just so nice. If you haven't seen my workbench build video, I made a whole compilation and made it, made it all into one big video. And I'll, I'll link it above and just in case you guys haven't seen it. I 
using my four center bits, I've drilled down those four holes in the corners of the, uh, the bottom side of the board. And now I'm just going to take a small bit and drill out the center a little bit so that when I put the screws in, it doesn't split out any of the wood. I put a small piece of tape on my drill bit just as some insurance to keep me from going too deep. The last thing I'd want to do is drill down through the front side of the board after all this work. So now it's just a matter of taking a screwdriver and screwing these guys down into our, uh, into our holes there and then we can test it for flatness and see if we need to make any adjustments. What you doing buddy? Hmm? What you doing? So I suspect my router table is the flattest uh, surface in my shop. So we'll just sit the board down on the feet on the router table and see if there's any rocking. And there is uh, just a very small amount of rocking um, from this corner to this corner. So I can tell that this foot is just a slight amount lower than the others. It's the way it looks by eye at least. So I'm going to go ahead and check it. I'm going to check it with my square here. These are all really, really close to the same. So this is just one of those real world issues that comes up. And these three are, I mean, they're so close to being the same after checking it with the square, but this one's just a little bit low. And I think I can actually get a stainless steel washer underneath this one and it will probably bring it up to be almost perfect. I can also tell that this one's at just a little bit of an angle, meaning the hole is not perfectly flat. It's a little bit higher on this side than it is on this side. So I'm going to take my bit and just try to square the bottom up a little bit better and then take a washer and put in there and put the, the foot back in and I think it's going to be pretty dang close. It's a little bit embarrassing to mess this stuff up on camera but this is just the way it is. I told you whenever I added these feet and, and uh, decided to lower them into the uh, into the cutting board I'm risking the the board not being level anymore but uh, this is just one of the real world things you'll run into so let's go ahead and try it again and see how close we are I'm going around and tested the board pretty much everywhere I can find a flat surface and it is so close I'm not sure I can get it any closer so I think we'll leave it like it is until I get inside the house uh, later, then I'll test it on the granite top. But we need to do uh, one last thing, we need to brand the board. There's very few things in woodworking that are as fun as branding a finished project. So the boards are all finished except for adding some more oil. I've oiled them once already, but I'm going to add a final coat since we added the feet and also added the branding. And I'm using the Howard cutting board oil. It's, uh, it says it's colorless, odorless, and tasteless. It's made basically with um, food grade mineral oil and vitamin E. If you haven't seen this product, I'll put a link in the description. All right guys, well that's it for the cutting board series. Uh, it's been a ton of fun building these cutting boards and 
it makes it so much more fun to share it, share it with you guys. So be sure to leave a thumbs up if you like this project and let me know in the comments if you know of a better way to put feet on the boards without sort of losing that flatness. Um, I, I, I don't know the best way to do it. I, I would think that you could probably take a piece of uh, sandpaper and actually glue it down or, or stick it down to like a granite top and then sort of slide the feet across it to level those feet out. But if you know of a better way to do it, be sure to let me know because I want to know for my next projects.